So welcome to this video which is going to have a look at how you can set up a number of constraint relationships in DOPS. And in particular what we want to do here is have a series of points that are moving and to have some RBD, some rigid body objects which are attached by a spring to those points and follow the points. That's probably easier to see than it is to explain so let's crack on. And we're going to start off with uh, two things, one of which is a cherry, or a, a couple of cherries which I've modeled here. And these are going to be the things that are going to be following the points. And I should say, by the way, that uh, this is a tutorial which is based on one by Grayscale Gorilla for Cinema 4D. Uh, obviously the method for doing it in Houdini is, is very different from Cinema, Cinema 4D, but uh, that's, that's where the inspiration comes from. Anyhow, let's have a look uh, at also the initial points. All right, wait a second, let's have a look at the this version. So, and we'll turn off the view of the cherry, and we'll pull back for a second. And what I've got here is a set of points scattered on a grid, and then a set of points scattered in a letter. So we have this letter. Uh, if we, we can zoom in on that, uh, which I then expand a bit and I convert it into a volume uh, and I scatter some points on it. And I make sure uh, that I'm scattering the same number of points here as were scattered originally on my grid. And the reason I do that is, sorry, it's scattered on my grid here, so 140 points. And the reason I do that is so that I can use a blend shapes node to blend between those two sets of points. Uh, and so what this will do is give us some points which, uh, because I've animated this, start off, here we are, on a grid over there, and then over the first 50 frames, they zoom in and form that letter, which you can see there. And I've done that by animating this parameter here on the blend shapes. And you can see that at frame 50, it's 1. And then at frame 1, it's 0. And that's blending between those two arrangements of points. And then we've got an out there. And to separate this from the rest of my simulation, I've just got this uh, node called initial points here which just object merges in exactly those points. So what I'm going to do to start with is to set up a, a basic uh, rigid body simulation where our cherries uh, start off instance to these points. So I need some, I need the cherry and I need my points and I need to go to the rigid body shelf and RBD point object. So let's select that and I'm just going to go for standard RBD point object. So it's asking me to select the object that whose points I'm going to use, which is obviously the initial points, press enter, and then the object instance is going to be the cherry, press enter. And now we see all the cherries there. So let's find out what dot network and make some changes to make this a little bit more efficient. So we've got a very basic setup here. The initial points node here is the thing that's bringing in all of those cherries and instancing it to those points. And what I'm going to do is make some changes on the collisions tab. And I'm going to change this into an implicit sphere. So that's going to make the collisions much more simple to calculate. And it really doesn't make any difference to the realism of the simulation that you can use a sphere encompassing the whole of the cherry and, and not lose that much realism. So what we should see now is that those cherries just fall straight down. The first step is to get them to follow uh, the points that we've got in our simulation. So let me just add a node here which is called point position. <coughs> 
And what a point position node does is center your rigid body object on uh, the position of a point. And the points we're going to use are in fact those points from our initial series of points moving across so that we're just going to get the cherries to to move along with those points to start with. So in order to do that we're going to need to know which point each cherry needs to be associated with. And there's a cherry instance on each point. How do we know which point each cherry is instanced on? Well if we have a look at the details view and each of these things called initial points is one cherry so let's open it up and there's a bit of data here called copy info and if we have a look at that we can see it's got something called copy num and copy num is the point which this particular cherry is instanced on and if we have a look here at cherry number 10 we look at the copy info in fact the copy number is 10 as well so the first thing we need to do is make sure this is being set always and I'm going to evaluate this at dollar $st, that's the simulation time. I don't need to worry about the point group, we're going to use all of the points in this SOP. But I do need to worry about the point number, and I need to have an expression in here which is going to associate the right point number with each cherry. Uh, and that expression is a dot option expression. And I can just say .net, which is the current .net, the object specification, which is dollar $object ID, so that each time this node is, is evaluated, it's going to be evaluated for a new object, and dollar $object ID is going to evaluate, evaluate to the, the ID of that object. And then we need uh, the subdata name, which in this case is copy info, as we can see there on the left. And then the field name, we can see, is copy num. So if we uh, put this in, what we should see now is, yeah, as this moves through, those RBD objects have stopped responding to forces, responding to gravity, they're just following the points. Now, that's not very interesting, uh, I needn't have used a, a dot network to achieve that, I could have just used, a, for example, a copy sop copying the cherries onto the points. So we need something a little bit more interesting. So let me start by, instead of putting this data, this, this point position data, straight into the position of the RBD object. So what this is doing is overwriting the position that's been determined by the solver and just sticking in the position that it's getting from the points. Uh, let's create a new bit of data, which I'll call point position. Uh, and what we should see now is that these will just all fall down because the position is now being evaluated as before by the solver. Uh, and what we have here is some data in point position, which we can have a look at. Uh, there we go. So this now has our position here in the T variable, which is the position of the point, and we can see that changes over time. And the next thing I need to do is set up some constraints. And this is a more difficult thing to do than you might think, because we can't just use the constraint tools here to set this up, because we're going to want the constraint to be between the object and a point, and that point's going to be different for each object. So we're going to need uh, an apply relationship node. So let's lay one down. And this is going to need to have a constraint applying to each and every object. And we need to change this so that it's going to apply a single relationship to each object. So it's number of relationships per affected object. One relationship for each affected object. And the constraint that I'm going to apply, well, sorry, the relationship that I'm going to apply is a constraint. So let me just lay down a constraint note. And the constraint uh, takes three inputs into the second input here. Uh, 
it takes the type of the constraint, and then it can take up to two positions. So let's first of all lay down a spring constraint, spring constraint relationship. So that's going to be the kind of relationship uh, that we're going to want to set up. And the second constraint, uh, the thing going into this constraint here, is the position of the object. And what we want is the center of the object. And the, the best way to achieve that is using anchor object space position. So let me lay one of those down and add that. Now, instead of having this applying to all objects, we need to apply it to the object that we're currently processing, which is dollar object ID. And it's going to just use the central center, if you like, of the object as one of the things that's, that's being constrained. That's what this has done. It's saying one of the constraints is going to be the center of our RBD object. And the second thing, the thing that we want to constrain the center of our object to, is the point. So let's lay down an anchor world space position. Let's lay that down. And we can see that this allows us to set a position that it's going to be constrained to. So how do we know what position to set it to? Well, fortunately, the object that we're processing in this network uh, has some data attached to it now, which is this point position node. What this point position node contains is the position uh, that we'd like the object to, to follow, to be attached to. And in particular, it's this, uh, these three numbers here, T field. And these, in fact, uh, if you have a three-valued field in DOPS, the, the three names are TX, TY, and TZ. Uh, for example, here or here it would be PX, PY, and PZ. It's just, that's just how DOPS names things. If you've got a vector field, then you take the, the name and add X, Y, and Z to fetch the three different components. So we need a, in fact, let me just enlarge this because we're going to need to do quite a bit of typing. So we need a DOP option again, and we need the current dot .network, dollar dot .net. We need the object specification, object ID. Subdata name is point position. And then, because this is the X component, we're going to get TX. Yeah. And I'm just going to now copy this, and I'm going to paste copied expression there and paste copy expression there and of course in the second component I want ty uh, and then in the final component we want tz so tx ty and tz so what that's going to have done is set a position of the other end of our spring uh, and that's going to create a spring relationship between our rbd object and the point that's moving. And that will mean that our RBD object will follow the point. And the other thing we need to do, of course, is to set the default operation. We need this to be updated on every frame. So the best thing to do is to put this to set always. And I happen to know that uh, the default values here in the, the spring constraint are not going to work that well. So we're going to, I'm going to put this up say a thousand I'm going to have a rest length of zero and I have a damping of 500 so quite big values there let's have a look at our, our scene view uh, and if everything has worked what we should now see we don't see and the reason we don't see it is because I've still got the display flag on my gravity node so let's just apply relationship put it on the apply relationship node and I don't want to visualize this, so let's turn off the guide geometry. And what we should now see, there we go, is that our cherries are now following the points. But they're not following them absolutely, they're following them because they're attached with a spring relationship each point. So when they collide with each other, uh, 
they will bounce around uh, and try and get back close to the point which they're following. And that gives it a much more organic feel. Let me just look through the camera and we should see that more clearly. So there we go, we can see them bouncing around and then eventually forming the letter A. A few words about uh, rendering this out. Now I've already got uh, some materials uh, set up on this on the cherry. Is a, you can see this material mode is using the stem and the cherry materials to shade the, the cherry. So that's all right. Uh, and we've got our initial points, which are going to be rendered. And those those are in fact the cherries. And the reason the cherries are there because this dop import node is fetching the geometry. And uh, if we have a little render view, uh, we can see. Let's look through camera one and let's have a little quick render. And we can see that they're, they're all showing up. I should say also that I've got an environment light here. Uh, it's got a, an HDR map on it. Unfortunately, I won't be able to share that uh, when I post the scene, uh, but that's just a way of, of lighting the scene. The uh, other thing that uh, we need to do is to enable some motion blur because let's choose a frame when these uh, are actually moving. There we go. Now we can see at the moment, uh, if we zoom in here, we can see there's no there's no motion blur on these. They're, they're being rendered perfectly uh, without any blur, but they're moving, so they ought to be blurred. So let's go to our output and uh, delete that. Uh, let's. Um, Let's just duplicate this actually and then call it final. And I'm going to make the renderer physically based rendering. And on the sampling tab, I'm going to allow motion blur. And I'm going to increase the number of pixel samples, say up to seven or something like that, because when you've got motion blur, you need to have a few more pixel samples. Uh, but uh, let's change this so that's using that uh, renderer. And we see we're, not, we're still not getting any motion blur. And the reason for that is because the DOPS network is going to create motion blur or allow you to use motion blur by adding a velocity attribute to the points of your geometry. So if we have a look here at this uh, this, the cherries as they're coming back out of the dot network. Well, you may not be able to see it there. Uh, it's off the bottom of the screen. I know you, you, you may be able to just see it. Uh, let's move this up a little bit. Um, well, you can't see it. There, there are, there's a V attribute. In fact, if we have a look in the details view, we can see that. So there's a velocity attribute on each of the points here. And that should allow the renderer to render motion blur. Uh, but there's one more thing that you need to do to make that happen, which is here on the render tab of your object, on the sampling sub tab, you need to enable geometry velocity blur. And that will allow uh, the renderer, tell the renderer that it should be using those velocity attributes to create motion blur. So we should now see, there we go, that we're getting proper uh, blurred. You can see those are nicely, nicely blurred now. So let's uh, just recap. Uh, we took the points and we took the cherries and we started off instancing the, the cherries to the points. We then created some data on each of the RBD objects which would allow us to find the point associated with that RBD object. And then we've used the apply relationship node and it's worth saying a little bit more about this. Uh, this is a relationship, this is a node which allows you uh, to do some more sophisticated constraints. It's very powerful. It's very complicated, uh, and in this case, all we're doing is using it uh, in a way which allows us to set up a different world space anchor for each RBD object. And we can only do that by using the apply relationship node. It won't work if we just added the constraint straight in. And the apply relationship node, number of relationships per affected object, is going to take each object going to create a re one relationship for each object. That relationship is going to be this constraint. It's going to be a spring constraint, and it's a spring constraint between the center of the object and this world space position here, which is the point position.
Well, I hope that's been useful. I'll leave you with a render of the full sequence of those uh, cherries flying in and forming the letter.